Wembley, Wembley. Uh, we are off the court and we're off to Leeds and Wembley. I mean, it sort of scans, <laughs> doesn't it? Uh, off the court is back and with it, a show-stopping, heart-pumping, adrenaline-filled party that is the Nations Cup. Whilst I'm sort of more golden arches than Wembley arch, Tamsin Greenway is definitely the player for the big occasion. Um, I've had Wembley, Wembley going around my head, but apparently, sneak, England are going to run out to Vindaloo, Vindaloo, Tamsin. Did you know? I did not know. I did not know. But I honestly played in a lot of venues in my career for England. Playing at Wembley is special. It's so unique. I'm so happy we're back there. Beyonce's done it. Madonna's done it. Tamsin Greenway's done it. I mean, what's not to love? Um, Vindaloo, by the way, I think is actually Joe Harton's favourite. So that's why it's getting played out, even though she's not here. Right, the Nations Cup is here. It's sort of the quad series revamp. Uganda replaced South Africa. It's a lineup with England, New Zealand and Australia split across Wembley, Wembley and Leeds over two weekends. Tamsin, how important is it in the, the context of the cycle that this tournament keeps going? It's so, so important. And like, all the coaches will play it all down in terms of, you know, it's a great opportunity and we're rebuilding, blah, blah, blah. blah. But for us um, to host the big nations, to have Australia and New Zealand here, to watch them play each other as well is, is incredible. Just to see the stages that are at, to witness some new players, um, to have Uganda in there, it feels exciting again, doesn't it? Um, you know, if you think about when South Africa entered this competition, we've had Jamaica in here before at times. It, to have to have Uganda being given an opportunity after their incredible Commonwealth Games and World Cup, finishing fifth um, last summer, uh, and, and almost sort of that development of those lower nations below, because it's important getting exposure. The Nations Cup, Quad Series, call it whatever you want, is one of the most exciting parts of the netball calendar. I'm going to call it Nations Cup. Because that's what it is from here on in. Oh, we As, probably should. Oh, you. Oh, we're going to love it. It'll be trending at some point. We're going to hear from Courtney Bruce, Grace Mackey, Hanisha Mohammed. They're all coming up on the show. But let's start with England then from back to front. Three players to offer you up. I went and spoke to them all at Bisham Abbey. Beautiful place, wonderful location and star players. Let's hear from Razia Kwashi, Amy Carter and one Helen Housby. I think we've got such a nice depth in this team at the moment like you know Frank can go back at the keeper I'm not coming out of goal defense though <laughs> I could probably do it for like a quarter but I probably need like two red balls to get me through um I'm not there yet but you know Tamsin Cam I might be there but we've got quite a lot of depth and I think you've got the likes of like Fumi, Jada you know Ellie Imo, like defensively that back unit is so strong and we demand the most of that out of each other and I think recently this week it's like defensive up to and an attack is answered and now we're just like no no no, no. We're, we're coming back at you and I think that's it's been quite nice to see like you know when you do six six reps or something and Sonia's like we've got four and you're like yeah we won <laughs> we won um so I think we we can definitely put up a fight and we're gonna plan to put up a fight against them I think we've had a perception that we're the underdogs in the past and now we're transforming to try and be more of the top dogs and that's a difficult shift, but we've beaten all these teams that we're going to be playing in this cup in the last 12 months. So we're definitely capable. We're, we're up there and we just need to do it. So into the start of it then this weekend. That's it. Your, your intention is to come here and beat them. Yeah, 100%. What means that will happen? What well, have you done that's different? Um, I would say that psychology, that culture stuff, that, that's starting to come through, changing the mindset from underdog to top dog, working through that. Um, we've obviously got Nat back in the mix, which um, she's obviously very valuable, very experienced. We've got Raz that's come back as well, and she, she's a great strength in the back. Um, and we've got everyone that was here in the last series of South Africa that's providing that strength. The quality is absolutely there, and I think you just look at Eleanor Cardwell, um, you know, she's an absolute gun, and I think the the beauty of England netball now is that I do think we are starting to get some good depth and even you know we've got Sasha coming in and Berry who is my mini me essentially um, yeah I do think the quality is absolutely there and there are girls waiting in the wings as well who aren't in this squad um, that are ready to play so I love the fact that we're evolving and it's not just a seven who I think historically sometimes we just had a seven who could just about you know stay up with New Zealand and Australia and I think now we've got girls who can come on and make an impact and yeah to kind of be on the flip side of not being the young one in the squad and being one of the older leaders um, it does feel quite rewarding to see these girls 
have the mentality that they expect us to win against New Zealand and against Australia. Uh, Joe Harton actually said something interesting that the girls told me about. Um, I think it was in the New Zealand series after they'd lost the second game. It was they were straight away like on the video like what do we need to do like how do we change this and she reflected that when she was kind of coming into it, um, if they stayed within 20 of New Zealand, they would be celebrating after a game and it would be completely different, the mindset. So I think now we've got that mindset of we expect to win every single time, whether it's Australia, New Zealand, doesn't matter who it is. I think that has definitely changed in an England netball um, compared to you know 20 years ago where you were lucky if you stayed within 20. Um, and it's been really cool to kind of live that journey and see different players be part of it. Right, brilliant to hear from the England team this week. And we're going to talk quality then from, from the back to the front, Tamsin. But just briefly, there seems to be like a, a, a mind shift set. And I think this, is, this has happened over Jess Thelby's time. They were all talking now and maybe consciously wanting to get that message out about winning, about going for gold, about being competitive. It's not any more about just turning, not just turning up, because clearly no England player would just turn up. They'd all want to win. But now it's that belief is there that this is a team that's going for gold. Yeah, absolutely. And and how refreshing. I, look, all teams are media trained and they're all t told to play it down. And when you're in competitions, they want to be protected. And, and I get that. But what I'm loving about this new group is that there's players come in that have watched success. You know, you have to remember that's a really um, incredible opportunity for some of these players. Years before, we watched teams getting beaten 20, 30 goals. So you come in hoping that you could do it but you're never quite sure and they're consistently now at the top they've had the best ever world cup finish making a world cup final getting a silver medal um and they're understanding the ebbs and flows of that off the back of the disappointment of the commonwealth game so they're looking at it going we can do this but how do we consistently do that and i think that fresh approach that fresh feel yeah the coaches can protect them to an extent but it's really really good not only for the players but also for the roses fans to hear these guys go yeah you know what this is what we want to do and this is what we want to achieve and and what a turning point that that could be for this group. Defence, defence. Talk to me about those epic defenders. I mean, it's a real range now and different options, isn't there, for Jess Thelby? Yeah, there are. But I think the, the, the concern after the South Africa series, we came off the back of it, it was a 2-1 win, but actually probably the best goalkeeper at that point was Fran Williams. And we know long term that can't be really a matchup for someone like a Grayson Wecky or probably even a Mary Cholock. So... This series will be an opportunity for someone like a Raz to get out there and put a hand up and go, come on, look at me. Sadly, she wasn't able to compete against South Africa. So I'm hoping for her and, you know, I'm a little bit biased because she's at Mavs, but I'm, I'm really hoping for her. This gives her a perfect opportunity to, to take that goalkeeper position and make it hers because that will be an area of concern for me. And, and we've got to use this series wisely to find out that person. Yeah, she talks a lot about how tough it was, how the last three years have been difficult to have back-to-back -back injuries but to have people like you in her corner saying you can do this and and it feels like from her point of view not from as you know we want her to have as many shots as she wants but from her point of view she sees this as her her chance her last shot to see to fall back in love with this sport right defense to midcourt way back in the recesses of your 2019 mind you said you Tamsin Greenway I put it to you said that Amy Carter should be starting in that mid and are we going to see that? Should we see that? Is now the time, Amy Carter time? Du, nu, nu, nu. I'm not going to sing anymore. Yes, yes, it is. And you know what? I, I did say that back back then. She's suffered injuries. There's been all kinds of things that have gone on. Um, and she, you know, and then you'll get other players come through. Your Imogen Allison, your Ellie Ratus and stuff. But actually, when Amy Carter came back into that third, series, third test against South Africa, she showed everybody why she should be the starting centre. And she needs to play there. She needs to be given every opportunity possible to cement it because your centre needs to be consistent. It can't be a roller coaster ride. She needs to learn on the job. This is a great opportunity for her. I love her temperament out there. And uh, yeah, I am pro Amy Carter. A junior doctor in the house and should be at centre. And then there's one, Helen Housby. Brilliant having her back in this team. Such a, a lift as well for everyone around her but who do you play her with oh she's got to play with El Carbo that that has to be a given that her and El they have to be given time to shine um open up that circle that rotating circle either position switching and changing around I, I think this series needs to be taken advantage of we're at home we're at Wembley we're going to be playing in Leeds uh we're going to be live on the telly like 
make the most of it. Come on, get some momentum, get some fan base on board, play your stars, play them well. And if you know if you want any bigger opportunity, Helen Halsby is back in England. Use an abuser, get her out on that court and show everybody just how quality she is. We're going to talk more about Cardwell a little bit later because there's an intriguing battle going to happen on court. When I say intriguing, it is bloody and it's going to involve Australia. Right, we're going to talk New Zealand first, though, because do you remember one Tamsin Greenway, the furore over the young England squad that went to New Zealand? How can you make so many changes? How can you bring these young players through? All those without caps. Not my words, just some of the sprinklings of social media. Well, from social media to the reaction to the New Zealand squad, it's a very different Silver's fern side we'll see in the, in the UK. Let's hear, though, from a, a massive part of that attacking end, a giant amongst netballers in terms of what she can do, although she's only got 27 caps. Grace Mackey. It's been so good to be back and um, be able to play netball again. I feel like my attitude now is so different and I just really want to relish any opportunity in any dress um, when I take the court. And so being able to play Con Cup and have a bit of success towards the end was really special. I was really um, um, going back and forth with our physio to let me play that series and I'm very grateful to be able to do so and have the support of my team there. And I think those results that we got towards the end are really evident of what our team is capable of and um, what could have happened for us at World Cup. And so I think we're just going from strength to strength and really um, back rebuilding what we've got um, and also been able to bring in some newbies along the way. You don't get picked for these tours if you're not capable. And so we've, there's been a really big emphasis on encouraging the girls that are here to really um, own their selection and own its opportunity. Um, we have what we have, we're over here now, we're ready to train and play. And so just really um, relishing the moment. Um, it's really new for me to be the experienced one and to um, take on the role of um, really leading from the front and um, people looking to me for support and advice. And so I'm really just trying to think of it as nothing changes. If I keep doing my job well, it'll lift the rest of the unit. Um, but it's exciting. I'm really um, excited with the new players that we have here and what they can bring. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they put out on court. She's not a bad player, Grace Nwecki, to have as you most <laughs> experienced in there. I mean, what a phenomenal player to see a back fit and just doing what she does best. However, are oh, some raised eyebrows right over the strength or lack of experience in this squad that, that Dame Nolene has brought with her? I, I think there are going to be eyebrows raised, but, you know, you, you do have to try people. We, we've always talked about this. You have to bring in people at the right time. I think what's interesting about her squad is that, yes, it, there's a lack of experience as a whole in, in sort of caps across the board, but... Defensive end will be pretty set with with the players that, that came off the back of the last two wins against Australia in the Consolation Cup. I mean, that's not bad. The mid-court, I, I mean, Nolene came off the back of the World Cup and went, this is not working, has really gone for this attacking, kind of quick, nippy style, moved Heffernan back into that wing defence where she thrives. Maddie Gordon has been given quality time out there. Uh, Whitney Suna, Samila, they've been exchanging in the wing attack. So, I mean, that's pretty solid, really, from there. Grace Nowecki being back... I mean, there are no words. She she is a game changer. She adds another at least ten goals, at least ten goals to this side, and is getting better every time she steps out on the court. So yeah, the eyebrows are around the goal attack, and it and, and it will be interesting. They they've brought you know a, a group of the rest of the shooters that add up to five caps between them. But you've got to get out there, and actually, if you have someone like Nwaki under the post, and you are winning ball as they're doing at the moment, then you're going to get plenty of opportunity. But I'll be intrigued because it's it's nervy. It's always nervy. And you can big it up as much as you want playing for the second best team in the world and be like, oh, it's fine. You're coming into the fans and everyone's protecting you. But it will be hard. You're playing up against a very strong Australian side. And actually, I think the best defensive unit across all these four countries is England in terms of how much ball they win off you and how much they're trying to create. So, yeah, it will be intriguing. Interesting that you talk about the best defence. Are you ready for some murder on the dance floor or even like the netball court? Because Helen Housby says she's looking forward to seeing the bib off between Cardwell and Courtney <laughs> Bruce. So let's talk Australia with a player just voted best in the world. 
Yeah, New Zealand have a bit of a different look team um, this tour, so it's going to be a little bit different for us. But um, we know what the New Zealand brand is. Um, they are fast in that attacking end. They let the ball go into grace in their defence end. Um, you know, they're flying and filling for each other. So I think we know what to expect. It's just about um, when we step out on that court, um, playing the diamonds way in that brand and um, taking it to them. We're super excited to take on Uganda. Um, like you said, it's something that we haven't done before. So um, yeah, just excited to, to get out there and I guess um, match our style against theirs and see what they can offer. But I think it's a really good step forward for World Netball to, to finally see us two against each other. Australia have been enjoying their time in London. I mean, they've been jumping in ball pools. They've been cycling the streets as well. And in Courtney Bruce, they have, according to you, and netball nerds the world over, the best player in the world. Seeing that, and Helen Housby's right. I mean, I hope she's not just stood there with her arms folded going, wow, what a contest. But, but seeing Cardwell <laughs> Bruce is going to be a thing of beauty. Yeah, of course it is. And, and look, Courtney Bruce uh, deserved this so number one in the world for me. She's special. And you know what? I've, I've said it before, I think, on this show. I, I can't understand the amount of grief she gets. Having played international net me, netball, trust me, even the cleanest players are not clean. So I, she is doing nothing different to what our beloved England defence are doing and what our the amazing New Zealand defence are doing. I mean, it means she is just playing the game. Um, I, I think she's brilliant. I think she's an absolute game changer, which is why I voted her number one in the world. I think she's so underrated. Her technical ability is brilliant. But... She has got an interesting personality. Match that up with El Cardwell as well, because on court they will go at each other they're, they're in different ways. But there will be some, um, some yeah, some key sort of battles that go along in that game. And so there should be. This is international netball, and I think again the beauty of having these players at home is that we get to see it live. You know, we actually get to be in the action. Wembley is so cool in terms of how you can watch the game and and how the arena works. Um, and you're going to be right in the forefront of watching these players go at each other across across the series. And there are interesting changes to the rules of netball and some things that we'll see when it comes to contact and the like, which we'll hear from Gary Burgess in, in just a bit, that just might make that coming together a little tastier. That's Australia then. Um, last to a team that has their first time in this series, Uganda. Hanisha Mohammed has already been playing in the UK in pre-season with her club side, Surrey Storm. When you get an, a bunch of opportunities, you want to be um, sure of what opportunity you're taking. So I wanted a space where I'm going to learn and grow and understand the style of netball at Storm. And I think Storm is giving me that and I'm excited to be at Storm. It's a great place to be, honestly. And I'm looking forward to playing for Storm uh, for the rest of the season and uh, probably, you know, win the championship. The girls are really excited for this particular tournament. Um, we're here for the very first time. Being regarded the giants of netball, uh, to be among the giants of netball, I think. Um, excited to be here and I'm looking forward to, to the games. We loved having South Africa part of the quad series, but to see Uganda into the Nations Cup, Tanzin, it's the world of netball needs to see these teams. Exposure for the teams as well, but some brilliant players within this team. Yeah, and, and don't underestimate. I, I, you know, I, I truly believe it's the way it needs to happen. You need to get exposure against the top teams. But you know, Uganda aren't just a rollover. The, the teams below, those five to twelve, are really catching up um, consistently. And the only way they get better is to have opportunities against all the big guns. So this, this is a great chance for them. Even learning how to back up so many key games against the tough nations as well. You know, there is no rest. There is no hiding in this series whatsoever. Um, and, you know, don't take away from the fact that they've got such great, talented players. You know, we talked about the defence of them, but down the other end, all the English fans know too well, Mary Charlotte. Like, you know, she is not someone to be messed with. And also how differently she plays the game when she plays for Uganda. You're going to see her out the circle. I remember you used to speak to Sarah about this and she'd be like, I love her. We used to try and keep her in the circle. She'd go home to Uganda and they've got a plane all out everywhere. We'd be like, Mary, under the post. And I, and I just love that. But you start to see all the different styles. And actually, it's a real challenge tactically for all the coaches to go, right, how do we how do we work this out? And actually, it's a massive learning chance for, for Uganda as well, because I think sometimes tactically, they don't always nail it against the top teams. They continue with their style. And, and you have to adjust. You absolutely have to adjust. So... I, I want to see sort of their movement throughout this series to go, right, this is how we deal with Mikey, this is how we deal with Bruce, this is how we deal with Raz, you know, what does that look like? You know my favourite thing in life is to stitch you up, so give me your oh. four to one 
in terms of order for the teams? Four to one. You, you, Uganda will finish fourth. Right. Um, New Zealand third. Mm. I mean, am I going to get shot? I can't see Australia losing this series. They've come so strong. But, but, that, I mean, but that, can you see so England big. winning it? You can't see Australia losing it, but can you see England I can't see Australia. winning it? England have got an opportunity. They've got an opportunity. They have. Australia have come big guns. So it, it, it will be interesting. I sort of stitched you up, but then backed you up and then took it away from uh, you. Yeah, you know, I don't mind. I, trust me, I'll be running around the arenas. If England win this, it'll be absolutely brilliant. And it will send such a strong message. But Australia have come strong. Right, one final component, the umpires. And new rules. Here's our Gary Burgess with a quick reminder. So, um, game management and contact, uh, they are the most significant changes, really. Uh, there are a few other bits and pieces, but basically the World Netball have um, elevated um, the contact rule to protect players' safety, really. So anything involving the head and neck is going to be dealt with quite um, quickly. Uh, by umpires and then as a result of that I would say that the, the contact contact and contest rules have kind of been elevated to the level so anything that kind of involves that or anything that would have been um, deemed uh, dangerous last year will be dealt with with a higher sanction uh, with regards to uh, suspensions and ordering off. Um, I think in the sense that brings me on to the last part of that change of the game management rules and actual fact that cautions have been removed in favour of more proactive conversation. So you should hear the umpires talk more. Um, it is quite funny, actually, because the last sort of five or six years, that's something that assessors have been telling me to do less of. Uh, I know you guys uh, like hearing the odd thing coming out, but um, we're actually able to, to now say more to change player behaviour. Um, so cautions out, proactive uh, advice in. And then the last bit of that game management change is that a player that's ordered off, so it's effectively a red card in netball, you go back to your bench, they can actually be replaced after four minutes. So if there is that higher sanction, it doesn't actually kill the game for the players and the coaches. It does mean that there's a recycle in that sense. So that's contact and game management changes. Um, the other the other ones uh, that are, uh, that are in there are um, there's the introduction of a tactical change. Uh, those people that have watched Super League previously would have seen uh, before that um, all of this pretend feigning injury is gone and players can actually ask for a sub or a tactical change and you'll see them say that. Uh, and the good thing about that is that there's positional swaps that are, can occur on court. So your shooters could swap or your wings and centres could swap without the need to substitute. That's the first tactical change. And then the second part is a tactical substitution where, again, you can just swap somebody from the bench um, to replace an on-court player without there needing to be an injury. Uh, so those are the two significant ones, I think, really. There is, a, there is one. I know you worked hard for this one, Tamsin, so we are going to call this the Gre Greenway Bayman rule. Um, a ball in flight, if the whistle goes and it's a shot on goal and the ball um, is in flight and, and it ends play and the shot's successful, that will now count, Tamsin. Your, your, uh, your, uh, yeah, your campaign worked. Uh, and then the last couple, anything, uh, toss-ups have gone. I know, it's terrible, isn't it? Uh, toss-ups have been removed um, and anything simultaneous uh, that would have um, previously um, triggered a toss-up um, is replaced um, by the team in possession retaining it or the team, if the ball's loose, the team that did have uh, possession then retain it. Um, now, one of the ones that, uh, that the last couple that have changed, there's been a change to the short pass. Now, all of those other rules uh, are, are there uh, for the four-year cycle. The short pass has changed, but World Netball have actually said that it's only going to be reviewed after a year because they're still not happy with... Um, basically how that rule is uh, interpreted or how it's written at the moment. So basically the there is a return back to the distance um, of a pass being travelled. So it's, it, you know, there is an, uh, a hand, the distance between a hand, which is attached to an arm, which is attached to the body. That's what the rule says. But the principle of netball is that every pass should be defendable. So if really there is a kind of, you know, one of these short shielding passes that really makes that um, intercept impossible, that's going to be deemed as a short pass as well. So those are kind of the main um, the main headlines. Uh, there are a few other bits to, to um, kind of speed up the game and um, to 
um, kind of protect the integrity so you don't have to wait for somebody to get back on court before you take a throw in. And then also any player on court, if there's any doubt whatsoever that the centre pass might be wrong, between the goal being scored and it being taken, anyone on court can then question that. So pretty, you know, not not huge changes, but some common sense updates, I think. Um, Gary, firstly, I'm, I'm impressed with how much power I've got. And if I know I can do that, I'm going to campaign quickly about the attacking contact. So don't worry, that'll be next year, guys. Four years, <laughs> four years. Look, what, I'm, what, I really, <laughs> what I really like about this is you talk about this kind of common sense theme that's going through. And we know... The, the rule changes has huge imp implications on the players and the coaches, but it also has massive implications on the fan experience. How much is that kind of taken into consideration about the development of the game? And if you had to pick one key key rule this year that's going to make a massive difference, what do you think that would be? Oh, goodness me. So I, I think the, to answer your question, I think the fans are um, they're as, they're as important as, as the players and the coaches. I mean, they're not they're not the number one. They're the, the players are. We want to showcase the game for the players so that they can show everybody how amazing this sport is and how amazing athletes they are. Um, but I think it, the consultation did involve um, um, spectators. I think short pass was uh, one of the big things that came back off of a, a questionnaire from Fast Five. Um, but I just think this whole, uh, for me, I think this whole idea of tactical changes, I know some people ask for rolling subs, but the, it, a rolling sub in itself is not an umpired experience. So, the, and there will be some people that say that it doesn't need to be, but I think just the whole speed, um, the planned nature of that tactical change will just speed it all up. Um, and, and, and the fact that it is umpired under a tactical change means that you don't have to worry about players running into an umpire's path and being penalised or too many players on court and all of that sort of stuff. So it is still stage managed, but it will be a, a huge amount quicker than previously. And Gary, just finally worth adding that this won't come in domestically until September. And if people want to find out more about all the rules, where do they go? Well, that's great. The, the World Netball have absolutely done a fantastic job on creating um, some uh, fact sheets, a bit like Blue Peter. They've got some fact sheets and they've got some videos. So there's 12 of those on the World Netball uh, website. But if you want to head over to uh, rules and updates on the England Netball website in the officiating section, everything that we do will be updated between now and September the 1st for when that domestic implementation comes through. It's always on my bookmarks. Uh, Gary Burgess, as always a pleasure. Have a brilliant Nations Cup. Thank you, guys. Thanks. I mean, I don't know about you, Tamsin, but I have that page bookmarked all the time. There's nothing I like to do of a night than read through the rules and regulations. But actually, you were right in what you said. It sounds sensible, doesn't it? It does. I mean, Gary Burgess is the only person in the world that can make rules sound great. <laughs> but you know, you know what? And, and, and I meant that about I, I understand that the game is always changing and evolving for the players and coaches. But this whole experience of the game you know as we're, we're trying to commercialize the sport we're trying to engage new fans into there it's so nice and so refreshing to to realize we are trying to make the game a better experience and and stuff that's going to speed up the game so you, you know we joke about that shot but they're the bits that get the crowd buzzing the people talking you know the last gas when you've got someone like El Carbwell on your team you, you play for those moments that you know in the hands with three seconds ago she's just going to turn and launch it at the post so um, yeah, I'm I'm really pleased and, and I think it's a real step in the right direction because to be fair, umpires have been getting a hard time, haven't they, probably in the last couple of years with how the games the games changed and sped up, but perhaps we haven't all moved with it and I, I think this is a brilliant step in the right direction. What he misunderstood is the actual Greenway Bayman rule is that when it leaves your hands, even if it's not going anywhere near, it's a goal. It's a goal. <laughs> I'm not saying that's your shooting ability. Right, that's it from us on this preview to the Nations Cup. Of course, you can watch it all across Sky Sports. A Sky Sports arena for that first match, Australia and New Zealand build up from 2.30 with Tam Zindai and the team England, Uganda at 5.15. But we're going to leave you with some new stars of the game as the players get the chance to go off the court. Bye for now. So you're, you're sort of getting into the action, but you're riding a horse. There's Amy Carter down there, does a flying intercept, and the commentator says, Amy Carter, get an intercept like a rabbit dog. <laughs> Amy Carter, phenomenal intercept. She looks like a rabbit dog, but oh, has she got the bone. Something like that. That's great. She's done it. He could have done it. Oh my God. Like, I love the, like, manic hysteria. Like, that just sums up the moment. And that was exactly, I think if you could listen to my brain when I was running around on the court, that's exactly how it would sound. So I think you did a great job in that moment. And I'd probably do it very similarly.
Final seconds, dying seconds of this one. Australia are up defensively underneath Helen Housby. She's there at the post. Helen Housby, MBE! Sky Sports, feel it all.